Hey guys, welcome to this uh, Let's Build with the Code Smash video. And in uh, this video, I'm actually going to show you how to build a, a microservice uh, architecture with Code Smash. So first of all, uh, what is a microservice uh, architecture? It's basically an architecture that uh, represents uh, some type of a uh, business, a uh, business unit, but it's uh, split into several different logical business units. So the reason why you would want to do that uh, it's uh, because it's uh, easier for your uh, developers, right? So either each developer or um, development team now needs to only focus on a small logical business unit. So for example, if you take your business and split it into separate uh, business units, then uh, each developer gets to focus on only one logical business unit. And this makes it much easier to uh, reason about uh, you know the actual business processes and it's easier to also translate them into requirements and also implement them in a uh, technical manner meaning to actually build the the uh, IT infrastructure so let's uh, start by actually explaining what the building blocks of uh, microservice architecture are so the the actual uh, building blocks are the uh, APIs. So what is an API? An API is basically a, a server that's uh, online and uh, you have an access to this server. So let's suppose that uh, you have a uh, user of your website who uh, needs to access some data. Your website is actually going to make a request to the API and your API is going to make a request to your database. Uh, once it uh, gets the data, the database is going to send a response to the API and here is uh, where you can do some, uh, you know, further processing on the data. For example, you can check if uh, the user actually has the access rights to the data itself and uh, if he does, you will just be returning the data to the user. So this is basically how an API operates. Let's now go a bit deeper into how a uh, API is actually defined. So each API is going to have an endpoint. So basically that's the URL by which you can actually access your API. And uh, each URL is going to have several routes and also the identifiers. So routes are basically going to specify what type of data you are referring to and the identifier is going to identify exactly which item you are going to either retrieve from the API or insert into your database through your API. And the way you're going to tell your, um, your API how this is going to be done is using these API methods. So basically, the first method is the get method and it's basically telling your uh, API that you want to retrieve, right? You want to get back uh, some data from the database. So if you specify, for example, a uh, route like this, so users and one, you are going to get back the first user, the user with the ID one from your database. Now, on the other hand, if you... Uh, specify the post method, you're expected to be posting some data to your API, meaning you want to insert data to the database. And uh, with, this, uh, with this route, you're basically telling your API that you want to insert a new user with the uh, ID2 to your database. And also with uh, this specific method, you can actually post some data, for example, the name of the user, uh, role of the user, and uh, so on. Now with the, with the third method, put method, this, ba this basically means that uh, you are just updating the user. And uh, with the delete, obviously, as the name says, you are expected to uh, delete a certain user. Note that if you actually do not specify a uh, identifier, for example, with the get method, you can actually retrieve all the users back from your database. Now let's, uh, let's continue and uh, see how exactly the uh, APIs are going to be implemented in uh, Code Smash? What's the logical definition of each API that's going to be built with the Code Smash's uh, API builder? So let's suppose now that you have some uh, input data, right? And uh, you want to transform that data into some output data. Let's say you have a list of uh, users and you want to filter out uh, 
the users who, for example, you do not want for specific purposes. For example, filter out all the users who are not uh, administrators. And uh, if you think about it, you can do several different such filtering processes. You can uh, also add some, uh, some uh, values to each user and uh, so on and so forth. So for example, in uh, Code Smash, we are actually going to be adding functions. So these are going to be visual blocks where each block represents a function that's going to transform your input data. So you're going to transform with function one, you're, then you're going to transform that uh, data with the function two, and then with function three, and so on as you define it. Lastly, once everything is done, you're going to be left with the output data. And uh, depending on uh, what you want to do, you can either insert this data into the, the database or simply retrieve and uh, send this data back to the user through your API. Now that we understand uh, how the data is going to get uh, processed in uh, Code Smash, let's see what we are actually going to uh, build today. Okay, so today we're going to build a, a complex system that actually consists of uh, three APIs and also the fourth one that's going to be the main API. So let's suppose that we have a large and complex system where uh, we have three departments in our company and uh, one department is only concerned with the uh, customers, the other one with the uh, purchases, and uh, the third one with articles. So if you think about it, we are basically modeling a uh, online store. So since this is the case, if you're pretty much now asking yourself, why would you want to uh, have such a system that's uh, split in three parts? Well, it's actually because it's uh, now much easier for your developers to uh, build a system because they are only going to be focusing on one small business unit and uh, each unit is a logical whole right so customers are one logical whole the purchases are also one logical whole and the articles are uh, one logical whole as well because in the real world these are actually real entities and uh, it's much easier to reason about them and if it's uh, easier to uh, reason about them then it's easier to also translate uh, the uh, requirements into technical specifications and also to build them. Furthermore that uh, means each and every one of your back-end uh, development teams now gets to build a uh, small system which is uh, much easier for them. But if you think about it let's say that you have have to show on your uh, website each customer and for each customer you have to show their purchases and then for each purchase you have to show an article and uh, the article name the price and so on and so forth neither of these api's has all the required data so you will have to create one more api that's going to join all this data so basically communicate with all these apis and then display the data on the front end with uh, this setup we are actually making it also easier for your front end developers because now they will only have one system meaning one api to work with so what we are now going to build is basically a system where we have these apis that can store and retrieve data for customers purchases and articles and also then one main api that's going to communicate with uh, each of these APIs join the data, aggregate it in a way that uh, we find useful and then uh, return it back to the user. And uh, now that we finally know what we want to build, uh, let's start building our APIs. First of all, uh, we need to start by building the first API and that's going to be our customer's API. So just type in the name the customer's API, make sure to check the REST API here and just click deploy. This is going to take around two minutes, so each API takes around two minutes to deploy, but you can still just uh, go and while it's deploying, you can go and uh, create the other ones as well. So we're going to move on to the next one and this is going to be our uh, purchases API. We can just go here, again, select the REST API and just click deploy. We're just going to wait and make sure that 
uh, it has started deploying successfully. So the confirmation is here. We can go on to the next one and that's going to be our articles API. So just type in the articles API and make sure to deploy. Yeah, this looks fine. This has been uh, deployed as well. We are going to take one last step and that's just creating the main one, which we're going to work on later. So this is going to be our online store API. This one's going to actually be contacting and getting the data from the other three APIs directly. So other three APIs are actually going to be communicating with their own databases while this one's going to be talking to those uh, three APIs and just, uh, you know, joining their data. Uh, let's start with our customer's API first. You can see that it's still being deployed. So if you just wait for a couple of more seconds, it's going to be done. And uh, we're going to start by uh, adding routes. And here we can see that it has finally been deployed. Let's go and type in the route. So it's going to be customer's route. And uh, let's just deploy again. Uh, all the methods, all the functions for each route to get the data from the database and insert the data are going to be automatically implemented. We don't have to bother with that. So let's just quickly jump to the next one, uh, which is going to be the next one. Yeah, let's, uh, let's take the purchases API. We'll take this one and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to implement the routes here as well. So what do we take? We'll take the uh, purchases, going to be the purchases routes. And let's also add uh, items because if you remember, each purchase has uh, several items. So we can deploy that now as well. All of these are automatically implemented. Lastly, we can go to the um, articles API and uh, make sure we implement that one as well. So our route's going to be articles. That's fine. Just add. What else? Uh, nothing else. We just deploy again. Once we've gotten the confirmation that deployment has started, we can just move on. And uh, that seems to be fine. So now we're just going to quickly go and uh, check our customer's API and uh, see how each of the uh, routes are working. So let's go switch over to the functions tab and uh, you can see that the customer's route is already selected. We have other routes as well. This one is used to add uh, the data to the database. So let's start and see if this is going to work. All the functions are implemented. We're going to add a new customer with ID one and you can see that this is actually working. Now we're going to switch over and uh, test the actual API through the URL. So in order to do this, we are going to manually have to post a, a JSON. So the JSON is actually going to have a name of the customer, right? So for example, our customer is going to be number two. That's the ID two, and the name is going to be Jimmy. So let's see how this works. And we're getting back success. So this looks good. Uh, let's just check if this is actually working to our customers route. Let's check it. Oh, make sure to turn on the uh, customers. This is just a hard coded value to help with testing. And yeah, as you can see, we're getting both customers back. This is fine and remove these uh, values, skip them during execution. So this is fine. These are just here for uh, testing purposes. So these values are going to basically just help you out. Uh, let's do the same thing here for the articles and see if this works. We're going to add, uh, we're now going to add some articles and see if we are adding them to the database. Uh, make sure to remember that we are adding the name of the article now. 
So article number one, let's say we're adding an apple. Uh, one more, we're going to add, uh, let's say, uh, an orange. So we're getting back success, this is good. And the third one, uh, let's say we're adding some grapes. Great, this seems to be working out just fine. Uh, let's query for all the articles. Uh, make sure to check this. So this is working fine. We're getting back all the data, all the articles in the database. So the fragment, uh, you're going to have the fragment uh, by default when you invoke the uh, API. It's going to show the uh, fragment of the route that you are using and uh, you don't have to implement that. This is just for testing purposes. We can now do the same thing for purchases. Just uh, remember that uh, when it comes to purchases, we need to add additional information when we add a purchase. We actually need to have a uh, reference to the customer who's doing the purchase. So every time we add a purchase, we add a reference to the ID of the customer who is purchasing. So just add a new field that's going to be called uh, customer and uh, we're going to do a purchase for customer number one. So we're getting back success. This is fine. Then the purchase number two, again, it's going to be for customer number one. And the purchase number three. Is going to be for customer number two. Let's just check if the purchases are yes. So we're getting back three purchases and you can clearly see that we have two purchases for customer number one and one purchase for customer number two. This is fine. Let's, uh, let's also do the same thing for the items because if you remember, each purchase has several items that uh, the customer has bought, basically added to his uh, shopping cart. So when we are adding a new item, we need a reference to the actual purchase to which this item belongs to. So just add the uh, purchase ID and uh, also make sure to add reference to the article that's actually being added to the uh, to the basket. So let's start from 100. So this ID is going to be 100. And article number one. So for the purchase number one, we're adding article number one to the basket. We're also adding article number two. And uh, let's go to the next one. And yeah, article number three. So purchase one has three articles in the basket. Now we're moving to uh, purchase number two. We're just gonna add this and this. So purchase number three is going to have just one item. So we can now check all the items. Yes, we can clearly see this is all the data in the database, the purchases database, and at the bottom, all the items that have been purchased. So let's now uh, quickly go to our online store API. That's our main API where we are going to be invoking all of these three APIs. So what we have to implement in the online store API is actually requests to all three APIs. So instead of writing to its own database, it's actually going to send the data to each of the APIs so they can write it to their own database. So what we need is to copy the URL of the uh, customer's API first, and let's try to make a call to this API with our main API and uh, display the data. So what we're now gonna display is basically all the customers that we have. Make sure to uncheck this so it's not implemented. This route uh, is going to be implemented manually. And we're going to add purchases as well because this is what we need. And also articles. So we have three entities here and each entity has several routes. Each one for its own API. 
so that we can request the data. And now we're going to implement the customers route, which means we're adding a fetch function, which means this is the uh, URL that we're going to be calling and storing the data in the result field. Let's, uh, let's just execute this quickly. Make sure to add the, the customers fragment. And there you go. We're getting uh, two customers back. This is working fine. Just make sure to tell CodeSmash that uh, you want to return this uh, result variable. This looks good now. We can just quickly deploy this to make sure that our progress is saved. Any changes that we've done that they are saved to our online store API. So once it's confirmed, we can go uh, to the next step. Now the next step is going to be adding a uh, new customer to the uh, API. So we are going to do the same thing, except we're going to help ourselves with some shortcuts so that we don't have to type out everything. Uh, we're going to take the routes. We're going to extract the route and extract actually the ID from the route that we're sending to the API. Uh, we don't need the last one actually, but we do need some uh, hard-coded uh, JSON data and remember that's just for testing purposes we're going to skip the execution well when we're actually calling the uh, API mm, let's see what we have to do so this is the uh, oh, we have to copy the uh, the URL let's go back here uh, let's just copy this quickly let's go back and just copy it here just paste it here. It's fine. Make sure to change this. This is now a post request to the customer's route, but uh, the post method. So this indicates that we are sending some data. So make also sure to stringify your uh, JSON and store it into the body. Because when you post something through your API, this body variable will already be present and it's going to hold all the values that you have posted to the API. Remember, we are just adding the name of the customer and make sure, make sure to add the ID for the new customer. And the ID is gonna be, I think uh, the next one's gonna be three. Yeah, it's three and just uh, make sure to take the uh, body variable which holds our data that we're posting to our API and put it right here and uh, finally execute and we're getting back success this is good which means we added a, a new customer but we need to just go and check oh make sure to skip this so we're now gonna see if we got back some customer okay so the third customer, the new one, has been added. This is fine. Let's now head over to our articles API because we need to get uh, the URL from there as well. Because we're going to do the same thing for uh, this API, meaning we need to be able to get back some articles and we also need to be able to add some articles to the API. So let's, uh, let's do the same thing. Uh, we're quickly going to go to the functions and now select uh, so this one's going to be the um, articles right the articles route first we're going to check if we can get back the articles so just paste uh, paste the url right here make sure you call the uh, articles route and the result is going to be stored here and of course we're going to return the result so let's see if this is working. Yeah, this works just fine. We're getting back all the articles. So we are now on our articles route, but this is a post route. So we need to change this to a post request because now we're going to be adding a new article. Again, we're going to just um, help ourselves to some shortcuts so that we don't have to write everything. This is much better. These are hard-coded values. Make sure to turn them off later. We don't need this one. So the articles route, it's fine. Uh, just make to just make sure to uh, stringify this. 
Okay, this is fine. And we don't need the type because that's handled on the uh, API side. Uh, so the article, the new one is going to be a TV, let's say. And uh, what's the ID going to be? I think it's going to be four. Make sure to add the body that we're posting and the result. And then we're just going to return the result. Let's uh, see if this works. Oh, we forgot something. Oh, of course, uh, make sure to add the... Uh, the parameter, the ID of the new article. And now it's working fine, so success. Let's, uh, let's check out if this is, if this is fine. Yeah, we got, uh, we got all the articles, including the TV. So the new article has been added to the database. So we are now on our purchases API because we are going to implement the same thing for the uh, purchases API. And uh, we'll copy the URL and let's go back to our online store API. Here's the purchases uh, routes. Let's go to the functions. So which one are we going to implement now? Let's do, let's do the purchases first, the get method, just to see if we can get back the purchases. So just paste in the URL and make sure to save the result and return the result. Of course, we need to add this. This is fine. So the purchase is route. Let's invoke one more time. Okay, now we're getting back the data. This is fine. So now we need to do the last thing, which is um, to actually add a new purchase. Again, just adding some shortcuts. We don't have to write everything. Where is this one? Ah, yeah, the um, parse body. Okay, just move this here. It's much, much easier. Uh, we don't need this one, actually, but fine. We'll remove it. So it's going to be JSON stringify to turn this uh, JSON into a string. And uh, so remember, when you're doing a purchase, you need to add the customer ID. So we're going to send a field called customer with the ID of the customer who's doing the purchase. So this is going to be customer number one in our case. And just uh, remove this part we don't need it because it's implemented uh, on the back end of the other API and um, the purchase ID just make sure to add the body this is fine uh, that's gonna be the result right and we need to return the result as well make sure that this is a post method because we are getting, we're aiming at the uh, purchases post route, and of course we need the uh, we need the parameter. Let's just try to execute this. Okay, we uh, missed something. It says invalid route. Ah, obviously the uh, the slash is missing. Let's try again. Uh, we're adding something unnecessary. Okay, that's uh, this is unnecessary. Now it's much better. So we've added uh, a new purchase. Let's just quickly go and uh, check how many purchases we have right now. Yeah, you can clearly see that uh, the fourth one has been added for uh, customer number one. So now that we've done that, we have to go and uh, also add uh, the items. So if you remember, oh, first let's uh, make sure we uncheck the hard-coded parts and um, let's move on so these are all the hard-coded values that are going to actually be present when you make the uh, API request so you don't have to have these available you can just skip the execution of these and uh, they will be in your execution 
of your API whenever you make the API request. This is just for testing purposes. So moving on to our online store API, if you remember that uh, each purchase needs to have uh, a couple of items and uh, what we're going to do is actually add those uh, items right now. So let's start. Okay, we're going to take the body, make sure to start from uh, 110, take the body that we're going to be posting and remember, we're po we're for each uh, for each item, we need to have a reference to the purchase, and of course um, to the article. So these are the two things that we are going to be adding. Uh, let's see if this works. First one is fine. The second one going to be article number two. And we are adding these uh, to the purchase for all of them. Once we're done, we're just going to skip the execution of this and uh, deploy. So it started deploying successfully. This is good. We can now go to the most important route. We can go to the customers, take the customers uh, API. And now we are going to create a new route. So what we have to do right now is uh, make sure that for each customer, for a specific customer, we can get all the purchases. And uh, these purchases need to contain all the items and also the names of the articles. So these are going to come from all three APIs. Uh, let's just uh, remove all of this. We don't need any of these. We can leave this one, this one is fine. We're going to be testing for customer number one anyways. So this is the correct route. Uh, let's help ourselves again to some shortcuts. We have this one, so let's just remove, this is fine. We're extracting the ID with this and also the body. In this case, we can just do it like this. So the first fetch that we're adding, if you remember, is going to be to a specific customer. So we can call this one the uh, current customer. This fetch is going to get our customer. Let's see if this, yeah, this, uh, this works. The first customer is here. And uh, this customer, if you remember, needs to have all the purchases and all the items. So let's, uh, let's make another fetch request to the uh, purchases API. So what we're going to do is just copy the uh, URL, add another fetch request just after this one, and make sure you remove this. You don't need this. This one's going to be for the uh, purchases. So this is going to give us back the uh, all the purchases uh, in the database. So let's see if this works. Yeah, this works fine. All the purchases are here. And uh, next it's the items. So we can fetch the items as well. So just store it into the uh, all items uh, variable. And all the items are indeed here. But if you remember, this is not really what we want because with these two last fetch calls, we are actually getting all the data back, meaning all the purchases for all customers and uh, also all the items for all the purchases that any customer has made. So what we will have to do is actually filter out those that we do, do not want. So first things first, let's also get the articles because each item needs to have an article name. So let's try that first. 
let's minimize this so this is not in our way and this is working just fine last one let's go to the bottom yeah the article names are now here so we have all the pieces of data it's uh, time to start uh, joining them and once they're joined we're going to add them to the uh, customer so each customer is going to have all their purchases uh, all the items for each specific purchase and uh, the name of the article as well so how are we going to do this uh, let's start which one so let's add this uh, special join function it takes actually two arrays that, that are going to be joined into one array so the for the first array let's just start with all purchases right and then all items this is going to be our second array and then we have to provide a join function so this function is going to take two parameters one is going to be each uh, purchase and the other each item and then we're going to join them on some uh, equality so in our case we are going to take the id of the purchase and then the uh, purchase reference in each item so that each item goes to each own purchase lastly we need to provide uh, the mapping function that's basically telling us uh, what we're going to be returning back what kind of a uh, json format so we so it's going to be an array and uh, it's going to have a json which has an id field which as you can clearly see by p.pk indicates the purchase id right but it's also going to have a items field and this items field is going to have all the items for this specific purchase so how do we do that but it's actually quite simple we just uh, take all the items and filter out the ones that have the purchase equal to the current one that's uh, currently being filtered and that's um, that's p.pk and we just have to save this under let's call it something like all um, all purchases and uh, items so if we execute this let's see what we get back let's scroll to the bottom uh, you can clearly see this is uh, this is looking good we have a couple of purchases here right three and two and four and at the bottom there's one and you can clearly see that they have each of them has a has an items field with uh, several purchases and each item has the correct id of the purchase so this is good we have uh, we've done well we've joined the data well uh, but this is not uh, this is not everything if you remember each of these items actually has to have an article name this is what we want to show so we have to do one more join let's uh, let's continue with one more join so here we are using another join and now we're going to be joining is actually all, all items with uh, all the articles and that way we are going to be able to add the uh, article name to a uh, specific item so where is it okay so this is all articles let's just post it here and let's just do the same thing copy paste so here we are indicating this as uh, i as an item and a as an article so our item uh, actually we need to take the uh, reference so that's the article in this item and uh, for the article it's just going to be the pk that's our primary key and just copy paste here so the question is how is this going to look like what do we want our end result to be so it's going to have an id right uh, just put it as an the id of the item that has been bought and uh, let's just add of course what we came here for the name of the article so that's uh, article.name and then we have to add the purchase the id of the purchase just so that uh, we can join it back to the purchases and that's going to be item dot purchase and let's store it as um, all items and articles let's go and execute this and see what we get 
scrolling down to the bottom we get the correct result so every single item now has a purchase and also the name of the article this is exactly what we wanted but we are actually not done yet so what we now have to do is make sure that this data is actually in each purchase so the items need to be joined before the purchases are joined and uh, we are replacing all items with all items and articles array so here as well so we are going to be joining it with this one that actually has the names of the uh, articles this is much better so let's just execute this and there you go you are now getting in each purchase you are indeed getting all items but they also have the article name now we are still not done because if you remember I said uh, these are literally all the purchases that are in our database meaning for all the customers but we do not want purchases for all the customers what we want are all purchases for a specific customer so the only thing that's now left to do is to actually filter them out and uh, make sure we only return the ones for our current customer we're going to now add another variable right here to make sure that we filter out all the purchases so we use the filter function and we just say that uh, in this here purchase the reference to the customer needs to be our current customer so that's the parameter that we're passing in if that's fine it's going to be customer number one and uh, you can see that there is one customer number two which is what we don't want now let's try to execute this so this is now executing it's uh, filtering out the data and uh, yeah you can now see that in the old purchases there's only customer one reference there's uh, no customer two which is what we wanted and now we have only the purchases and items for customer one so now that we have the purchase data finalized there's only one last thing to do and uh, that's to make sure that our current customer has all this data assigned to it so let's add a new field called purchases to our current customer and let's take the uh, purchases and items variable and assign it to the customer and we're going to make sure to also return the current customer we are going to execute this so this is now being executed it's running fine we are getting back the data let's uh, see we have the current customer with all the purchases assigned to it and you can see all the correct IDs this is fine this is looking good and so yeah the only thing that's now left to do is to actually go and uh, deploy this and we can go and uh, see how we are actually going to invoke this from our API testing tool and uh, we can go and uh, do the testing so we're taking this route the customer purchases and uh, let's test for customer number one always remember that the first invocation takes time there you go this is our first customer with its ID and also all the correct purchases for this customer with all the items and uh, each item has an article name which is exactly what we wanted let's try, try for customer number two yes we're getting back data for the customer number two only one purchase and uh, let's try this here customer number three doesn't have any purchases and uh, that's that so guys I hope you liked the video because uh, more of these uh, let's build with code smash videos are on the way for next.js and uh, bubble so until next time I'll see you then